injury. Doing something mean to it. Do it better than anybody. And welcome to the Adam Josh Oral Brog, uh, number 39, I believe. Uh, this one is entitled Power. This is from um, a... This is from a, a brog that I wrote uh, June 15th of 2010 and and I read the I reread the brog a few days ago and I thought you know what I actually spent a bit of time uh, writing this one so I thought it would be worth going on the video log so let's get into it. What is power? And then I look up some definitions online of, uh, of power. Possession of controlling influence, the, the deterrent power of nuclear weapons, the power of his love saved her, the powerfulness was concealed by a gentle facade. Physics, the rate of doing work measured in watts, joules per second. Ability, the possession of the qualities, especially mental qualities required to do something or get something done. Danger heightened his powers of discrimination. Office of a government government official. Holding an office means being in power. Being in office already gives a candidate a great advantage during his first year, during his first year in power. The power of the president. One possessing or exercising power or influence of authority. The mysterious presence of an evil power. The force may be with you. The forces of evil. Exponent. Exponent. A mathematical notation indicating the number of times a quantity is multiplied by itself. Might, physical strength, world power, state power, enough to influence events throughout the world. Supply, the force or power for the functioning of the gasoline powers the engine. Baron, a very wealthy or powerful businessman, an oil baron. Ability to do or act, ca capability of doing or accomplishing something, political or natural strength, the balance of power in Europe. Great or marked ability to, to act, strength, might, or force, possession of control or command over others, authority, ascendancy, power over man, men's minds, political ascendancy or control in the government of a country, state, they attain power by overthrowing the legal government. Legal ability, capacity, or authority, the power of attorney. Delegated authority, authority granted to a person or persons in particular, office or capacity, the powers of the president. Document a written statement conferring legal authority. A person or the thing that possesses or exercises authority or influence, a state or nation having international authority over influence. The great powers held an international conference. A military naval force, the Spanish Armada, was a mighty power. Often powers, a deity, divinity, the heavenly powers. And then I wrote after that question, what is spiritual power? And then I wrote a loose definition that I found online that I thought was all right. We define spiritual power in a higher power of consciousness, offering a sense of peace, contentment, confidence, and hope. When you are connected with this limitless loving energy, you feel good, positive, and relaxed. The higher power is known by many names. God, Goddess, Buddha, Jesus, Allah, loving energy of the universe, the great mystery, spirit guide, inner self, true self, and creative self, regardless of the name you use. I would sort of counter that. Uh, I didn't see a name there, but anyway, that's a loose definition I, I came off of online. Spiritual power is an invisible force, abundant, abundant in nature, allowing for the betterment of all. Through our personal experience developing our spiritual intelligence, we know that the more you acknowledge and nurture your connection to this energetic force, the happier you are. The fastest and easiest way to nourish your spiritual connection is to recognize and acknowledge this connection in your daily life with each breath, breath you take. Notice this life force present in the flowers that grow from seed to blossom, and then as they wither and die, they transform into nourishment for other seeds to flourish. Feel the earth beneath your feet, aware of our living and planet and all it provides. 
See the stars that shine and become aware of your connection with all life. With this awareness, you naturally express gratitude. When you are grateful, you automatically experience the greater peace and happiness. Expressing gratitude is one of the fastest and most direct routes to deepen your connection with the loving energy of the universe. And thus ends the uh, definitions I pulled off the internet. And so begins my blog. With these two loaded questions answered in a rough framework, framework I shall begin my blog. The two questions were, what is spiritual power and what is power? I've lived long enough to know that on average humans enjoy power, spiritual or otherwise. On average, I think it's safe to say that people desire power and the ones who have power usually want more. Other questions worth asking would be, how do I get more physical or spiritual power? How does one go, go about getting more power? Tony Montana would say, first you get the money, and then you get the power, and then you'll get the woman. But if you're going by Tony's advice, you may also want to consider the part that he failed to mention and that most people who emulate him fail to recognize. And then you get sniped and die in a hail of bullets. The Tony way isn't for everyone. Another route would be being born into a family already in power. If you could somehow arrange that, that's almost a surefire way to make sure you'll get more power. For those that don't have that option, there's always working for it or being in the right place at the right time. All of this, of course, depends on your flavor of power. There's political power, monetary wealth power, natural resource power, military power, negative or positive spiritual power, power of influence power, physical power, Structural power, and well, that's all that comes to mind right now. I'm sure you can fill in whatever type of power I'm missing. I'm including the popular artist slash musician's power under the power of influence. We currently are all too aware how politicians go about jockeying for more power, and I'd rather not even bring that can of beans out of the cupboard today, to be quite honest. If monetary wealth or power is your bag, investing, divesting, and good old-fashioned crooked schemery would probably be, probably help you get more power. Notice that I made natural resource power a different category. That's actually quite a topic to discuss, maybe another day. But in short, ones and zeros are paper currency backed up by nothing out of nowhere, created by fiat, lent out at interest, is really not the same as a brick of gold or an oil well or a brick of silver or a patch of land that you can call your own. All right, let's go a bit further. Say my particular flavor of power was for natural resources, and I wanted your land. Maybe I'd give you a bunch of paper or a piece of plastic backed up by ones and zeros for it. But if you're smart, you wouldn't let me. Cough, cough, Detroit. Cough, cough. Like I said, maybe another day. Bunny trails. Where were we? Ah, yes, military power. As can be expected, if you want more military power, you do a good job. Excel at your tasks, say the right things, and maybe you'll rise through the ranks. Voila. If you want to gain more spiritual power, I suppose we'd have to start talking faith or various disciplines, retreats, mountaintops, meditations, personal relationships, or divine giftings. If none of these things did it for you as much as having influence over others does, maybe you'd do well to acquire a few of the others and write a book or start a cult or something. Musicians tend to fall in love with this category, well that and money. I know musicians who love being worshipped like they are gods. If that's your thing, then that's your thing, right? If you want more physical power, start working out, eat right, you know, the usual. If you want more structural power, maybe move to Dubai and hire some people with all that money you have and get some retarded buildings up in the air. Changing gears a bit, I know people who won't appear to have power, but in fact have great power. There's also people who appear to have great power, but have none. Wasn't that what the movie Aladdin was all about? Superman. Now there's power flying around, superhuman strength. Who needs money when you have that? And all the money in the world couldn't get you any closer to being born as Superman. But that's a movie, so who cares, right? How about if you were on a deserted island, all alone, your plane crashed a little ways away, and you miraculously escaped death to swim to the shore of this island somewhere in the Pacific? So you're on this island in a briefcase from somewhere from someone else on the plane floats ashore. You crack it open and shazam, twenty billion dollars. Better yet, it's full of gold bricks or diamonds. You're rich, right? Yay! So you laugh and are excited and blah blah blah. Day passes, two days, three days, and no one comes to save you. You get hungry, so you start looking for food. And while you're trying to figure out ways to get into a coconut, you keep having this nagging thought in the back of your head. I'm a billionaire. What am I doing on this island all alone? Starving to death.
and no one ever comes to save you and you die at the end. Is that the type of power you want? You can't really eat that type of monetary power, so it holds little value under certain circumstances. The world's wealthiest people know this, and have thus decided to secure natural resources, all while retaining moderate interest in banking, global financing, and geopolitics. Remember that episode of The Simpsons where Mr. Byrne and Homer were freezing to death in the, some cabin and they start burning money to stay warm? I guess that's sort of the same thing. Fiat currency can only get you so far. I'd rather have military power and the power of influence or political power than a million dollars ca uh, cash if I was freezing to death. Those kinds of power are more likely to save you than the paper. Superhuman powers would be better even still. Personally, when I think about power authority, which I sometimes do, I keep coming back to the same conclusions. My conclusion being that if all these stories we hear about the Messiah are true, then he is the most powerful to ever exist. And yes, I know that you, that you and I can't physically see him right now, but what if all those so-called nuts about... What if all, what if what all those so-called nuts say about him is true, that he's returning soon and all that, that I really am convinced that whatever power that the most powerful person on earth has at the time of his arrive, arrival, that power will seem like matchbox cars compares to his, his power. You read things like King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and it doesn't really sink in until you start thinking about power and authority. Nice fairy, ta nice fairy tale Bible stories from childhood, right? Until you start asking yourself, if all these countless saints died for their belief, what if they're right? What if all this end time stuff is really going to happen? It sounds crazy, but a lot of things would sound crazy before they happen. What if you had said to some, what if you had tried to explain 9/11 uh, to somebody in 1998? I know a lot, a lot of people would be like, okay, that's silly, and it can never happen. Besides, who cares? That's years away. Or imagine someone was trying to convince you about this oil spill in the Gulf, but a few years ago. You'd probably think some, something of its magnitude could never happen because we're so advanced or something like that. That's always been my thing. Call me crazy, but I guess I just believe that things seem extraordinary a little easier than most... I, I guess I just believe things that seem a little extraordinary easier than most people. For the sheer fact that without the benefit of hindsight, pretty much every major world event to date would be seen as extraordinary, or extraordinary, or damn near impossible. Power, right. Obviously this is one of those topics you can bunny trail off of in a thousand different directions. There's also that petty power of I am your boss and you do what I say than taking pride in being the boss type of power. You find this type of power in the silliest of jobs. You know that somewhere at the toothpaste factory there's someone getting fired because they rotated the cap one and a quarter turns instead of one and a half turns. Petty power. Those types of power don't really mean anything when something serious happens like an earthquake or a flood or something awful. Those types of power are more psychological than anything and usually are an indicator of the perpetrator's inner insecurity and or severe complex. These displays usually make me physically ill, but hey, that's me. You may totally love this sort of thing. More power to you. Of all the types of power we have discussed so far, I personally find spiritual power to be the greatest of them all. Of course, some ascribe to demonic or dark power, and that's and others go the opposite way. I'll not discuss the dark side of spiritual power today. You've probably heard it said before, for what does it profit a man to gain the whole world but lose his own soul? I'm sure you can think of a few celebrities who seem to have had everything but then were found dead with a suicide note with something to the effect of, I want more out of this life. Not that you can't have it both ways, for sure you can, but I think it's a little more commonplace to see the balance out of whack. Maybe that's just human nature. I mean, if you owned the sun and leased the moon, or if you had all the gold in the world but hated your life, or you hated the fact that nothing aroused you sexually, wouldn't that be sort of craptastic? But now we're getting into another bag entirely, the culture bag. Our culture, media, celebrities, etc., etc., are all selling us ways of life. In between being advertised to on the idiot box all day long, we have something called programs. All of these things in our culture are designed to tell us what we want and what will make us happy and define us as human beings. A whole bunch of bull, if you ask me. But again, the people in power who control the networks and all that behind the curtain type stuff, they want it that way. So what is little Johnny Two Cents going to do about it other than not watch TV? Wrapping up, certain types of power are fleeting, certain types are illusion, 
Smarter people than I have wired our culture so precisely that the majority of us chase after paper and digits, all while they continue to secure natural resources from our taxes that afford them the luxury to supply us the former. It's a sick joke, really, but that's what power does to some people. If none of this makes sense to you, try listening to this song and read the blog again. I had it on loop while I was writing. If it still doesn't make sense to you, write your own blog and tell me why. Make sure to send me the link. And the song I was listening to wasn't Kanye West Power. It was... The beginning is the end. Is the beginning. The theme song from the superhero action movie The Watchmen performed by Billy Corrigan of the Smashing Pumpkins. Two million four hundred and forty three thousand people agree that this song is worth listening to. So that's my uh, blog. Adam Josh Oral Frog. Power. Tell your friends to get a job. Now that I think of it, let me add this little note. I don't know if any of you have read this, The New Penguin History of the World, but uh, I picked it up, I think, around that year that I was writing the blog, and you can see that it's pretty worn out. I, uh, I took it cross country. I don't know what that is in the back. So I took it cross country and read it while uh, during a road trip. It does take a while to read. It's basically like an, an encyclopedia of uh, what uh, the author considers the history of the modern world. And what I found, uh, you know, people ask me, what, you know, what do you think about the book? What was it about? And uh, pretty much the history of the world <laughs> is just war after war and conquest after conquest and colonization and imperialism and I mean if you want a general synopsis of pretty much every other page of this book is uh, some culture went to you know war with another one and uh, etc etc I'm just wars after wars and empires after empires conquering other empires and uh, that's sort of a sad reality. I guess sometimes I, I live in my own little world where um, I just don't I, I don't I don't enjoy the idea of war. I like I like to think that we could live in a world that uh, doesn't have to have war. And even if there was like, you know, 60% of the people in a country that wanted to go to war, I would hope that democracy wouldn't win and that the other 40% would say, no, the last thing we're ever going to do is go to war, not the first thing. I was in the United States the other day and, uh, and, uh, we're crossing the border and I was thinking, you know, if they want to turn us around just because we were just touring, 
touring around. If they want to turn us around, they can pretty clearly just say that, uh, you know, the country's at three wars. And I heard that excuse back in uh, 2004 when I was crossing the Saskatchewan Montana border. I went to um, the Black Hills in uh, South Dakota and I went to go see Mount Rushmore for myself. And it's a lot smaller than, uh, than it looks in the movies, but side issue. Uh, when I went to cross the border, you know, I had a big long beard and I just so happened to be reading the Quran, so I had that, <laughs> I had that in the car. And, uh, you know, the three or four guards, you know, spent probably about an hour and a half with me. And there was nobody else there. It's in the middle of nowhere, the border check. And they made a point of telling me that their country is at, in two wars right now, and so the security is escalated and blah, blah, blah. And rightly so, but we tend to forget it sometimes, you know. If you want to call it a war, I mean... When you're fighting a quote-unquote war on other people's soil, you know, it's not like one country versus the other country. It's more like us versus you in your country. There's really no way you can win those type of wars. So in that sense, the North America is pretty smart because they keep all their conflicts so far off the uh, off their own soil. You know, like Alaska has more oil than all of Saudi Arabia, but uh, they're not uh, drilling for oil in Alaska. You know, Canada and the United States alone have a ton of oil left on un, un, uh, drilled for, but uh, so far, right now, uh, we'd rather import it. Uh, how did I get there? So the history of the world. Sadly, uh, if uh, another species from uh, another planet came to ask us the history of the world, we'd have to sadly include uh, a pretty bloody streak of uh, dominance, imperialism, colonialism, and war, and uh, I don't know how that makes us look as a species, and um, all I could say to the extraterrestrial would be, uh, sorry, uh, you know, this is us, I don't really know what to say, um, there's some people there's some factions of us humans who uh, who see war as a means for gain, who seem who seem who see war as uh, as justified, who see who lack so much empathy that they are willing to uh, go to war or justify it with whatever means they can to uh, get whatever resources they can and. Uh, that makes us look weird, I guess, but, uh, you know, I guess, uh, other animals in the, uh, in the animal kingdom go to war, you know, lions eat gazelles, so they could call lions racist because they're preying on gazelles all the time and deer and buffalo. Those racist lions, or the speciesist cannibals, jockeying for power. I don't know. I'm. It's early morning, and that's all I got. That's my. I'm Josh Rollbrog. Tell you.